see. The winner of this game will face Rutgers for the national championship on Tuesday night. The Scarlet Knights are winner over LSU in the first national semifinal. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Doris Burke, it's great to have you with us. Two of the best programs in all of college basketball. Two number one seeds. They'll match up tonight in this semifinal. Each one of them led by a unanimous All-American. Two dynamic individuals who have great influence on the on-court demeanor of their respective teams. We start with Wade Trophy winner Candace Parker, who at 6'4 has the best skill set of any player in the country. She's at her best on the block. She's been a dominant defender. Ivory Latta is a player who goes back to the level she was at a season ago, especially in her ability to get to the rim. She's the most prolific shooter in their history. For Ivory Latta, it's about the abusive energy that her team feeds off of. For Candace Parker, it is about the calmness she brings to the table. When you look at their respective NCAA tournament numbers, it's no wonder they're here. Holly Rowe and Mark Jones will work the sidelines for us. Let's check in with Mark. Yeah, guys, believe it or not, Ivory Latta, North Carolina, has been even more vocal in her leadership role during the last week here. In fact, she's a three-time All-American, three-time Most Outstanding Player of the ACC Tournament. There's even been a 250% increase in attendance while she's been at North Carolina for the last four years, which begs the question, does she need a championship to validate her career? When asked that, her response was, hey, we have all the right pieces, all the right tools. Without a national title, I will have had an empty career. Now let's go over to Holly Rowe. Well, Mark, Tennessee, Candace Parker has had a similar impact. In fact, Cat Summit, who's had countless All-Americans, said that having Candace Parker has changed the way they play. In fact, she used the words of her old rival, Gino Ariema, when they were winning championship after championship at UConn. He said, we're good because we have Diana Taurasi and nobody else does. Pat Summit says they're special now because they have Candace Parker and nobody else does. In fact, Coach Summit told us she woke up yesterday morning at 5 a.m. and as she was laying there in her bed, the thought went through her mind, wow, I am so glad Candace Parker chose Tennessee. What makes her even more special right now, Coach Summit says, is she's finally putting together her game on both ends of the floor, becoming a dominator on offense and defense. Mike, back to you. Holly, it's a valid comparison. She's the closest I've seen to Diana. ESPN's coverage of the 2007 NCAA Women's Final Four broadcast in high definition. Here are your starting lineups for North Carolina. Lana and Camille Little will start in the backcourt. Up front, Rashonda McCants, Latoya Pringle, who's a tremendous shot blocker, and Elena Larkins. Sydney Spencer, one of the forwards up front for Tennessee, Bobbitt and Hornbuckle are in the backcourt. And there you see the front court anchored by Nikki Anasicki up front, the All-American, Candace Parker. Olivia presents our coverage of the 2007 NCAA Women's Final Four, the broadcast in high definition. Tennessee in the home white. Carolina in blue. The second semifinal is underway. North Carolina basketball. Little on the run. Can't hit it. Follow no good. Parker got a hand on it. Knocked out of bounds. McCants had a good look at the follow and couldn't score either. For Carolina, it's all about tempo. Anyone who's seen the North Carolina men, they mirror that program. They want to get a lot of possessions, especially all over the floor, and they've got great depth. Here comes Bobbitt at 5 2, the shortest player ever given a scholarship in the Southeastern Conference. Spencer trapped and turns it over, and that's what Carolina lives off of. Offensive rebound kicked out to Latta. She's not quite the penetrator she used to be. Coming off of last year's injury door, she gained a lot of weight. Well, she was out of condition. Ivory Latta was not able to go through her normal off-season and preseason conditioning routine, but Sylvia Hatchell understands that when she's in shape, this team is dangerous. She won it all in 1994. Pringle. Boy, Carolina is tough on the rebounding, and they beat everybody this year with an 11.2 rebounding margin on the season. It's number three in the country. Their second shot is often their best shot. They get multiple opportunities because they crash hard. And they 
They beat Tennessee early in the season. They out-rebounded them by 10. One and done there on the jumper by Hornbuckle. It wouldn't fall for it. Little is back the other way for Carolina. Tipped and stolen. Here comes Hornbuckle. Both teams a little tight. Spencer, offensive rebound to Hornbuckle. A fresh 30. It's not going to take him that long. Spencer again got her hands on the rebound. Couldn't hold it off the Bobbitt miss. And here comes Latta pushing it off. Oh, Bobbitt and Latta, that's a pretty good match up there. Parker behind the back and she fouled. Foul's going to be on Little. Here's how North Carolina got here. Prairie View, Notre Dame, GW, and Purdue. A lot of people favor this team, and they have since the beginning, them and Duke, of winning the national championship. I don't think there's any question Carolina's the most talented team in the country. You saw what Notre Dame did to them. That was the least amount of points in a victory in the NCAA tournament. They slowed the pace to their liking. Tennessee wants to be a little bit more up-tempo than Notre Dame played the game. Parker, so smooth. Baseline foul. Here's how Tennessee got here for Pat Summit. Drake, Pittsburgh, Maris, the real Cinderella team. And then they hammered Ole Miss in a game that a lot of people thought was going to be nip and tuck. They beat them by 36. Well, and the advantage of playing Old Miss is Carol Ross's team was a pressure basketball team. They wanted to turn you over, get you playing faster than you wanted to do. Exactly the kind of matchup they have with Carolina. Parker is one of those athletes. You see her handle a ball once for two seconds, and you say she can play, and boy, can she. Well, Pat Summit said this is a young woman who feels like if she's going to be defined as one of the greatest players to play the game, it's about championships. She certainly hasn't played like a player operating under that kind of pressure. Her demeanor has been outstanding. Tennessee trying to press. They get the turnover. They don't get the layup, but Parker there to follow, blocked by Pringle, and then Parker with a silly reach-in foul. Now, things are not going to come easy. Go, go, Gadget Arms. Latoya Pringle is an outstanding shot blocker. Great length, and she goes right after Parker, and you're right. Understand the value to your team. Don't commit a silly one. Down the lane went Alex Miller. She lost the ball. Bob back the other way. It's a double team, and boy, are they letting them play. It's a little ragged to start the basketball game. Pringle, the single season shot block leader in North Carolina history, rejected a couple there. And Pringle picks up her second personal. We have only played 235. There's a lot of conversation in the media after Ohio State and Georgetown semifinal on the men's side about how quickly the officials blew the whistle. You want your stars on the court in a national semifinal. In my estimation, unless you take somebody's head off or blood is drawn, whistle should be hard to come by. And a sicky too strong. In the first game, it was 70 to 57. Look at the turnovers. 49 combined turnovers. North Carolina doesn't mind that. They don't mind turning the ball over a lot if you do because they think their offense will get more points out. They're going to have turnovers by nature of the way they play. The pace, they're going to make mistakes. Sylvia Hatchell only objects if they come in the half court in poor decision making. We'll see how those numbers play. And the Siki misses a couple of free throws. He's not been good for a while. Ball stripped and knocked out of bounds. Alexis Hornbuckle is unlike any player I've ever seen. She rebounds it well out of the guard position. How about the speed to recover and take that thing out of Larkin's hands? And Larkins has great strength, Mike. Hornbuckle is going to have to handle the ball very well and score for Tennessee to be successful. 
Beautiful move inside by Little, but she can't finish a little off balance. She just took the shot. Parker back the other way. So smooth. Goes with her left hand and drains it. You can't guard that, folks. That's 6-4 on a rake and take. And there's not an individual player in the country who can stop her. Little reach in foul on Bobbitt, and boy, she didn't like it. She's right in Ladder's face. And they're exchanging a little shove there. <laughs> now, this is a key matchup, and this kind of banter occurred in the first matchup. See, Bobbitt's going to come over and talk to Ladder right now, make sure she's up in her grill. But this was a key matchup. Bobbitt. Lada exchanging words now. It doesn't bother one or the other. Well, they're going to be right in each other's face the entire game. And you might have noticed Bobbitt was trying to uh, do a little flop and get a foul on that last sequence. Let's go to Mark Jones. Guys, a little over a month ago, Sylvia Hatchell spoke to Ivory Lada and said, hey, you have to play with more emotion. Get back to being your emotional, effusive self. Well, there's a demonstration of it right there. But I spoke with the supervisor of officials with respect to the taunting rule. They say it's not a taunting foul as long as it's not negatively directed at an opponent or official, guys. Back to you. What is the positive direction, I wonder? <laughs> and a sicky. No, walk. Two turnovers against Tennessee. Well, we thought the first game was going to be a fist fight in a phone booth. This is going to be a fist fight in a movable phone booth. Carolina is 0 for 9 to start the basketball. A combined 1 for 16. Another block. What defense. Anasicki kicks it ahead. Parker, can she save it? Yes. Good pass by Parker. A foul by Lana. Boy, they're getting their money's worth. Standing ovation from the Tennessee section. 15-57 to go in the first half. Tennessee and Carolina, it's only 4-0. Russell Athletic, ESPN Arena Football. All season long on ESPN2. It's time to play Take On Orbits. This week's winner is you. That's right, you. Go to Orbits.com during the Hotel Mega Sale and save $100 on five nights at select hotels nearly anywhere in the world. Just Orbits and go. The dream is still alive. Someday it will come true. And this country, it belongs to folks like me and you. So let the voice of freedom sing out through this land. This is our country. The all-new Chevy Silverado. The 2007 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Dude, these guys just stole your phone. Yeah, joke's on them. We're in Italy. My phone doesn't even work here. What about when you get back home? Doesn't work that well there either. Look, you know what? Come on, look up at the All right. See, the joke's on them. <laughs> Singular has more coverage in more cities worldwide than Sprint. Singular, now the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Now get the broadband razor for only $39.99. Huh. Calories provide energy, but how much energy do you need? Powerade Option, the low calorie sports drink. They pick up touchdowns, pick up the bucks, and pick up their teams. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. At eHarmony, you don't search for a match. We bring highly compatible matches to you based on 29 proven dimensions of compatibility. Log on to eHarmony.com and get your personality profile a $50 value free. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz. Save big at Orbitz.com. Just Orbitz and go. And in part by Chevy, an American revolution. 
The Temptations were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989, always known for their dancing, their choreography, their harmonies, and for the suits you couldn't wear on the street without being arrested. <laughs> Man, that's a group I can get with. Check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, listening into that Tennessee huddle, Shannon Bobbitt told her teammates as they were waiting for Pat Summit to come over and address them, she said, hey, Ivory Latta, she bumped me in my chest. I had to push my arm up and get her off of me. She is all riled up. I thought maybe Pat Summit would try to calm her down, but she didn't. All she did is address her team and tell Nikki Anasicki she's got to be more physical and that they've got to continue to have their emphasis on getting the boards. Holly, I think it's going to be a battle of wills between the two smallest player on the court. It's probably going to end up even. Good ball movement by North Carolina again. They just can't make a basket, and here comes Bobbitt. Streaking pass, and look at this, she got the rebound. Takes no talent to hustle, but boy, does it make a difference. Bobbitt, one of the few junior college players you will ever see have a chance to play at Tennessee. They groomed them early there. But Pat Summit found herself with a hole because of the transfer, and Bobbitt fit it perfectly. Yep, Charlotte Wiley Gatewood transferred out to Maryland. She was in need of a point guard, and it's rare, but this young woman is so thankful to be in a, Carol, uh, a Tennessee uniform. Brings great energy and defensive presence. You see the struggles offensively, and a lot of those 11 shots have been good looks at the basket. Mike. Miller cut off at the baseline. Latta will launch. She's short. Out of bounds to Tennessee, 0 for 12. Pretty good when you're 0 for 12. You're only down by five points. In their three losses this year, they came up with fewer than 70 points, and that's a big difference for them because they lead the country in scoring. Nice reach in play by McCants, and she can't hit it. You would think that uh, Tennessee would have a wider margin than they do with all of these missed shots by Carolina. Parker missed the shot. I think she was expecting someone to come over and give her a little more trouble on it. McCants, finally, 14.33 on the clock before Carolina gets its first basket. You cannot be late in transition defense when you're playing North Carolina. Anna Sicki. Covered well, kicks it out the horn buckle. They'll start the offense again. Spencer, a little high low pass. Parker tries to tip it in. And a tie up. Possession arrow back to the Lady Balls. Uh, Ivory Latta triggers the nation's most dangerous fast break. They get out in their lanes. They keep the floor spread. Hornbuckle nearly makes a great play. Good concentration by McCants. You talked about in the first game watching people rush it a little bit. I think both of these teams are doing that right now. Bad pass by Spencer. Larkins had the fast break. Had to hold it up. Now Latta against Hornbuckle. Bad pass right to Parker. She wants to take it herself. Fade away. No. Latta with a rebound. She had it taken away by Anna Sicki. Anna Sicki stealing it from the little guard. Got two, Got two. Let's go. Well, Ivory Latta has heard all year long that the nation's best point guard was Lindsay Harden. She came into the NCAA tournament with a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, but she is shaking the start of this basketball game. How does she respond from here? Boy, Sylvia Hatchell upset. That was the second foul on Lata. She wants to know how the big center for Tennessee took the ball away from her. <laughs> Well, and that's an unusual sequence right there. Sylvia Hatchell was just in Ivory Lada's grill. Now, usually she handles Ivory with all positive reinforcement, but she's clearly upset at her senior point guard. Well, neither she nor Hornbuckle can lose their focus just because they're wolfing at each other a lot. Spencer got down there. The ball was bounced off of her. Good play by Carolina. 
to save it. And right now, it's athlete against athlete. They're not playing very good basketball. Rashawn to McCants made that last point. It just feels like the energy level is very high, but they've let their emotions impact exactly. their level of play. So everybody just needs to settle in, take good shots, run your offense. You surprised that Lado's still out there with the two fouls? I am a little bit, but if she's a senior guard who understands her value. So we have to not one of those who automatically checks you out of the basketball game with two in the first half. With Parker and McCants tugging at each other, and McCants gets a bump on them. I mean, they have a grip on each other's jersey. Here's the trap. This is a 1-3-1. They try to make you make a mistake. Good play. And then a tie-up. And a possession arrow to Carolina. Possession arrow to Carolina. Rashonda McCants is an excellent athlete. You know her brother Rashad, who was a star in Roy Williams' first national championship. Well, she's got the elevation of Big Brother. Nice looking move. 26 combined shots in this game. Only three field goals. That's right. Three of 26. Yikes. That's not pretty. No, but it is intense, isn't it? But Parker is all over the floor in the defensive end. Got a hand on it, couldn't hold it. Now, shot clock recycled. They said Parker had possession. That would be questionable. Parker gets the rebound there away from Breland. Breland got it back. A little nearly tipped it in off the floor. Here comes Parker on the break. And that's an offensive foul on Candace Parker. That's two on her. Excellent and she play. didn't do a very good job of pulling up on that either. No, exactly. A little jump stop would have been the better play because Alex Miller understands that the star is coming at her and does what she should do, gives up her body. I think Pat Summit's got a pretty good beef on that. There wasn't a lot of contact on that one, especially when you consider the contact that has gone uncalled in the first eight minutes of this game. It's going to be a hold on Anna Sicky. Good backdoor cut by Camille Little, who's exceptional at reading defenses. That's one on Anna Sicky, the 6'4 junior center. And Parker will go to the bench. If Atlanta matched up with Hornbuckle, one of the few players she's going to have a four-inch height advantage over. <laughs> Banks at all. And that helped on that play. Yes, it did. Do you like your chances if you're Tennessee, if you can make Carolina execute in the half or the quarter court on the offensive end? So out of that trap, the 1-3-1, one, one, they drop back into a man-to-man -man defense. Hornbuckle in that first North Carolina game was pretty much overwhelmed by the atmosphere of playing a team at this level after playing really small ball in junior college in Texas. Now she's got to launch a shot, had it blocked, and it will be a shot clock violation. Excellent defense by Jessica Breland, who stayed right in her face and blocked Shannon Bobbitt's shot. Ivory Latta, the consensus All-American guard, off to a slow start, but they're only down by one. Fall in love with Papa John's new Italian Meats Trio Pizza. Authentic Italian taste from our better ingredients, like our zesty Robusto sauce and three hearty Italian meats, ham, salami, and sausage. Get a large Italian Meats Trio Pizza for $11.99. $11.99. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Taste the difference. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Nice ride, homie. I'll trade you. <laughs> Chevy Impala SS. An American revolution. We represent the Coke brand. We would like to sue Coca-Cola Zero. Would you say that we have a case? For what? For 
taste infringement. We want to just sue them back to the Stone Age to send a message that they're tampering with really the flagship of the company. It's one company. It's like you suing yourself. Yeah. But, but they're on a different part of our floor. Da, 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 da. Glidden Team Colors paint, you can get the official colors of your favorite team. Sir, you're all set. Whoever that may be. Exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. It's a big night on the ESPN family of networks right now on ESPN2. The defending champion St. Louis Cardinals playing host to the Mets on Sunday Night Baseball. And it's 5-1. Mets. Right here, it's almost the same score. It's seven six here. We're in the third inning. In the lineup for Tennessee, number thirty three, Alberta Augusti. Tell you what, there's been more contact in this game than there has been in that one. Parker with two fouls on the bench. Now North Carolina has not lost to a non-ACC team in thirty seven games. It's been a while. Can Tennessee break that streak? Lad, a great job of taking advantage of the numbers. Got to get to be a little for the layup. That won't get it done. Transition defense, quick hitters by Carolina are what you want to avoid. What can they do without Candace Parker? Where will the offense come from? Here's Anasicki. Offensive foul on Anasicki. That's two on her. North Carolina has the best team in the speed in the country. So whether they're trapping or recovering in help situations, you have got to be aware that these athletes cover an awful lot of ground. Outstanding rotation by Little to take the charge on Anna Sicky. Atlanta pulls up about 20 feet away. Ball knocked away and stolen again. Both teams turning it over constantly. That's eight against the heels in 11 minutes. There's an air ball fired up by Fuller, the sophomore. That ball's out of bounds for the Eagles. Really ragged first half, and it's because of the pressure that they're extending against each other. You know, I like that coaching to Pat Summit. I do not think she liked the shot out of Fuller just took, but she encouraged her. She said, hey, get your head up. So she's not being critical. She can address the shot selection in a timeout. And Fuller's been pretty good for long range all year long. Now Little will try one from out there. Fuller with a rebound, tips it over to Hornbuckle. And we've gotten Sydney Spencer on track as well. She averages 12 points a game for Tennessee. This is Spencer. Bumped by Little as she tried to drive to the baseline. Very physical defense on both ends. Shot clock at five. Hornbuckle. Tough pull-up jumper under pressure. Another shot clock violation. Great defense by Alex Miller. Let's go to Holly Rowe. During that last timeout, Pat Summit came to her team with the whiteboard. And on the whiteboard, she wrote six offensive rebounds. She said, this is what North Carolina's got. And the reason is we're not a physical team right now. She said, I demand physical box out. She wrote it on the board. She said, I want you to put a body on somebody. She's challenging her team to get more physical and get those boards. This is her worst rebounding team in history. Their plus one margin is typically plus 15. So it's not in their nature to board it hard. Miller makes a tough pass. The ball lost out of bounds. Well, this is not going to be one they put in a time capsule and open up 20 years from now and say, this is, this is as good as it got. Tennessee hasn't had a basket in seven minutes. Well, you wonder where your offense comes from with Parker on the bench. Spencer's a terrific outside shooter. Hornbuckle likes to go off the dribble. Shot clock again down to 10, and they're still 35 feet away from the bucket. Wide open there, Augusti, and she's fouled. Is that Latta? That's three on Ivory Latta, and it's a three-shot foul. 
It's the up fake, yeah, and this should be on the floor indeed. It would yep. be Tennessee basketball, but a huge implication for Carolina. Can Alex Miller step in and give him great play at the point guard? Well, now both All-Americans are on the bench. Pull-up jumper good by Augusti, the junior from Marrero, Louisiana. Tennessee back in front. Oh, great pass. Perfect pass inside. McFarland had the baseline. Erlena Larkins, I believe, would be the best passing post player in the country. And whether she's facing up with her back to the basket, she finds people if you double her. Now she's a first-team All-ACC performer and named by the Associated Press as a third-team All-American. Backdoor cut basket and a foul. Oh, they're going to call that an offensive foul. Carolina has been timely with their rotations, and Pat is saying, don't leave your feet. Backdoor cut rotation is solid, but you know what, Mike? That's rewarding for defense. She was deep in the paint on that one. This is about as physical game as you're ever going to see. Nice spin by Little, who averages almost 14 points a game, and the Heels have a three-point lead. Here comes the trap. And another turtle. That 1-3-1 one -one has been effective. All that length, all that athleticism. Tennessee with 12 first-half turtle. In and out, here comes Hornbuckle. Gets into the middle for a 15-footer. No. Rebound goes to Larkins, who averages nine and a half. She has five here in the first half. Miller. The foul on the floor before the shot. Well, Camille Little is the leader of this basketball team. She's the person most likely to get in her teammates' face. She said, I've got one shot left at a national title, and you better believe you're going to get my best shot. Carolina up three. After 89 years in the making, this is our truck. The 2007 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. The all-new Chevy Silverado. I'm told you are the master. I seek your help today. I like fantasy baseball, but I don't want to play. You need live scoring power. I'll take Joe Mauer. is important, hence the available seven-speed automatic transmission. See a larger gear ratio spread and intuitive gear selection enhanced performance and fuel efficiency. Translation, 25 exhilarating highway miles per gallon. At Mercedes Vans, it's all about the little things. See your local authorized Mercedes Benz dealer for a special lease offer through Mercedes Benz Financial. From Charter, the new Showtime original series. Is it better for a king to be feared or loved? Why choose if you don't have to? Order Showtime now to see Jonathan Rhys Myers as Henry VIII in The Tudors. It's good to be king. Very good. Get Showtime in the movie view. Call 1877 save 181 today.
12-9 heels with 7-16 to go first half doors. Well, if Ivory Lava is the style, Erlena Larkins is the substance of North Carolina. Against this zone, they're going to enter the ball into the post, and the country's best passing post player, Erlena Larkins, makes miss me a little sneak behind the defense. Outstanding cut, outstanding pass. Tennessee, on the other hand, zero assists, 12 turnovers. Ouch. Lana on the bench. Three fouls. Parker with two. She's on the bench as well. Who steps up when the All-Americans are gone? Iman McFarland out of Temple Hills, Maryland. Short. And the rebound to Spencer. Bobbitt now guarded by Miller. Spencer got it in the foul. Against Carolina's pressure, backdoor cuts and passing off of those cuts is absolutely crucial. That is a great set to run where you enter the ball into the post and then the back cut because the help defense is vacated off the box. Candace Parker, what do you think? That beautiful execution. Spencer, great point play. She's their best free throw shooter, 89%. And we're tied at 12. Look at how many more shot attempts. 23 16 field goal attempts because Tennessee has so many turnovers. Larkins tries the same kind of pass to a cutter on the baseline. But that time, instead of McFarland getting it, it was picked by Tennessee. Good move. Anna Siki somehow got control of the ball and scored on a baseline drive. They want her to be more assertive on the offensive end. She certainly has the frame to compete. Little can't handle it. It's out of bounds. You can order copies of every complete game from the NCAA 2007 Division I Women's Basketball Championship through NCAA On Demand at NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Anna Sicky playing 25 feet away from the basket. This is Bobby. Four, no. Carolina pushing at every opportunity. McCants, good bounce pass. The shot won't go, though. Knocked out of bounds. Off of Tennessee. Pringle had a shot at the follow. And she's been a non-factor since blocking a couple of shots early. It's been a ragged offensive half. Heather Clater, number 14, for the Heels will come in. Her first appearance in this semifinal game. They're a really good outside shooter. You've heard of the designated hitter. She's the designated shooter. And they try to get it to her. Clayton lost it. Then McCants grabs it right back, and she'll try a 12-footer and knocks it down. McCants with the steal and the basket. She is as assertive and as aggressive as I've ever seen her to start the basketball game. And the book on her, she's usually not that way. That's got to be a great sign for North Carolina. A dusty. And Sicky gets the rebound. That's a tough scoop shot for Hornbuckle. And almost a miracle category. Miller on the run. Bobbitt got back to cut her off. That's typically the kind of shot that earns you a seat next to Pat yes. Summit. <laughs> and maybe even a little further down the bench. Pringle with a shot. Her first basket. Latoya Pringle averages 10 points a game. And here comes the trap. Can they force a turnover here? Fuller kicks it out. Bobbin for three. Bobbin almost 41% from long range. Boy, for 
a kid who told Pat Summit she was nervous. Shannon Bobbitt looks anything but. She's not nervous anymore. Look at this. Great defense, nearly a tie-up, forced a bad pass. And there's the recovery by Augusti. 13 turnovers for the heels. Hornbucker pull-up jumper. And Hornbucker can't hit it. I feel like these teams are tired. They expended so much energy to start this basketball game. Things haven't gone well. They look winded. Look at Alex Miller. I think the adrenaline is gone now for everybody. 4.07 to go in the half, and it's a one-point game. Well, you have to stay spaced against Carolina's trap, and they do a nice job reversing the basketball, uncontested shots, as Shannon Baba says, let me hear you, Tennessee. Tennessee with a one-point lead, 4.07 to go in the first half. 96 and 19 in the tournament. 26 Sweet 16. That's all of them, by the way. Final fours 17 times for Pat Summit, and she has won six national championships. Every one of those is a record. And I told her a couple of days ago, it's not really a final four unless she's here. And she said she's missed it. Yeah, it's usually called the Pat Summit Invitational. Yeah. <laughs> Miller all the way in, had it partially blocked the follow by Pringle. Somehow it spun out, and here comes Tennessee. Hornbuckle. Good hesitation dribble, then she missed the shot. And Miller back the other way. Two on three. Miller pull up and swatted away. She had no chance against Anna Sicky, who held her ground. I'll tell you this, Nikki Anasicki has stepped up huge. She's rebounded, she's scored, she's blocked shots, she's been active since Candace Parker went to the bench. Dominique Redding, number 13, has the ball. She's in for the first time for Pat Summit. Now to Hornbuckle. They're having trouble finding some offense without Parker. Hornbuckle, oh, great pass to Anasicki. Pringle, what a block. Boy, those two kids can play some defense. Nothing easy in the paint. But can't. No. Whoever wins this game is going to need the day off to get ready for Rutgers. Good drive by Hornbuckle, but she can't score. And then a foul on the rebound. 2.45 to go in a wild first half. Departure is 6 a.m. tomorrow. No, hey, lady. It's time to play Take On Orbits. Today's players have bad weather, must book a hotel before the other 200 passengers. Go. A quick? Yes. <laughs> uh, Dentmore. Oh, no vacancy. Orbits TLC lets you find a hotel right from your phone. Next time, Orbits and Go. They pick up their games pick up their teams and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. provide energy, but how much energy do you need? Powerade Auction, the low-calorie sports drink. You know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but my mobile broadband network is powerful. I told you that. Television. Okay. But your mobile broadband network only works here. So where does your network work? Pretty much here. Can I check my email on your computer? Sure. Thanks. Singular has mobile broadband coverage in more cities worldwide than Sprint. Singular. Now the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Now get the laptop connect card for only $49.99.
Saturdays? Anyone can rock it on a Saturday. Give me something to look forward to on a Wednesday between my boss and my commute. Give me surround sound in my cubicle. Give me grilled chicken that keeps things light with an Asian glaze that keeps things interesting. Give me a half rack of ribs and a full rack of napkins. Give me the top down and a wide open lane. Give me a cedar seared salmon that only tastes expensive. Give me a new way to eat out. Smaller portions and prices so I can rock it any day I want. Life is short. Give me more Fridays. Ivory Latta with foul trouble. Same for Candace Parker. That's our Star Watch update. And Tennessee leads by only one door. Well, you wonder where points are coming from. As Carolina extends their pressure defense, they come out. You've got to stay space. And an entry pass to the elbow has been effective in man and zone. Watch the back screen by Nikki Anasicki. Shannon Bobbitt's percentage from three is very respectable. Solid screen. Miller can't get there in time. You know, when they've run their offense, they've gotten good looks. It's just a matter of sort of settling down and getting their emotions under control. Pringle on the one and one hits the first. She has three. Let's check in with Mark. Yeah, guys, a pretty emotional huddle on North Carolina's part recently. Uh, Sylvia Hatchell, the head coach, uh, said, hey, guys, we have a lot of rested people right now motioning at Pringle and Larkins who are back in the game. And uh, then she pointed at Elena Larkins and said, score, 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 <laughs> score. Four times. I think she gets the message, guys. Keep it simple, right? Nearly another turnover for Tennessee. Every pass contested. Dusty saying a lot of minutes. Redding, a brick. Wow, she's in the game to make shots. That was not an auspicious start. What a screen in backcourt. Pringle just leveled Bobbitt. And then a three out of the corner. McCants has nine. Rashonda McCants has only made 26% of her three-point shots this year. But Shannon Bobbitt is still shaking the cobweb. The official just on that screen said, get up, Shannon Bobbitt, no call. Bobbitt tries a three and knocks it down. There's the answer. I love that kid's toughness. She might be the smallest in stature, but she might be the player with the biggest heart. Pringle nearly knocked her in the last week. 21-20, Carolina by one. McCants does a great job of finding the open player on her pass, and she gets rid of the ball on her. Good defense inside, knocked out of bounds to Tennessee. Well, Mike, here is the screen you were talking about on Bobbitt. It is set by Camille Little. She tries to sell it. The official simply says up. This is what results. They are outmanned on the defensive end. A nice, uncontested jump shot. Bobbitt came back with a three to end. But this kid's got so much heart. She got up and gave the official a stare like you wouldn't believe, and then started counting her teeth just to make sure they were all there. She got tripled. 1.15 to go. That's a kick on Miller. Well, you can tell, Bobbitt has really assumed the leadership of this team. She is telling everybody where she wants them to be, what they're doing right, what they're not doing right. It's not an easy thing for someone who comes from a junior college. Pat Summers said, I love that kid so much, I'd adopt her if I could. <laughs> Steps through a double team. Good passing by Tennessee for the wide open layup for Alberto Augusti. If you're patient and you do not allow them to make you play faster than you want, you can get good opportunities. Little trying to set another screen, and now Little able to get to the baseline because of the double team. Here's a steal by Bobbitt. Tennessee by a point. Bob it again. Short on the jumper, Anna Sicki. Three second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. If they want to hold it, and that's exactly what Pat Summit is saying. Shot clock at nine. Good head fake to get by Miller. There's the block by Larkins. Four on the shot clock, 8.4 on the game clock. 
Boy, and now Bobbitt wants to turn around and go after Miller. She's not going to give in to anybody. Coming up at the half, we'll check in with Trey Wingo for our halftime report. Well, of course, that will include first half stats and analysis. See Vivian Stringer will be with us at the half, and Phelps wins another gold medal. The only reason he didn't win eight, the teammate was disqualified on a relay race. He's led a dominant United States swim team. That has been an unbelievable individual and team performance. This is going to be the lowest scoring half for each team this season, and they are just overwhelming each other with their defense. This was what we expected in our first matchup, yes. and then Rutgers went out and hung 37 points on LSU in the first half, but you know, we talk about the pressure from Carolina. Tennessee has done a nice job pressuring and stripping and getting deflections as well. Four on the shot clock, Anna Sicky. Bobbin, they took too much time. Boy, that is a wasted possession, and the Tennessee bench is really upset. When you've only got four seconds on the shot clock, how many passes do you expect to make before it expires? Especially off a timeout. You just set the offense. You made sure they were aware of the clock. I mean, even if you're reluctant to take a shot, you have to take it. Latta spent a lot of the first half on the bench, as did Parker. They'll be back for the second half. Miller trying to get off a shot. She traveled with one-tenth of a second left. We're going to get Latoya Pringle back in the game because she's got the best length and shot blocking ability. This is a great substitution by Sylvia Hatchell. One-tenth of a second, there isn't much you can do. No, nope, but you want to put as much pressure on your inbounder as possible, so you put your lengthiest, rangiest defender on it. This is going to take a lob somewhere inside and hope for a tip. Now they're going to put another tenth of a second back on, which in terms of the rule is inconsequential. You're still not going to be able to catch the ball come down and shoot it. This one's tipped and that's it. Touched by Pringle and putting her on the inbounder saved any chance of a possession. Really good coaching job. As you pointed out, Doris, to get that size out there on the inbound play. 22. 21 at the half. Let's go to Mark Jones. Coach, a low-scoring first half for a team that averages about 85 points a game. Ivory Lida sat with three fouls for most of the first half. What do you say to her at halftime to get her engaged in the second half? Hey, she's out there the second half. All right, first half's over. Scores about even, one behind. And, uh, hey, it's a whole new half now. Let's take off and play basketball. We've missed a ton of layups. I mean, we've probably missed eight or ten layups. We just got to take our time and make our shots. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Summit, how does your team need to improve offensively in the second half? Keep Candace Parker on the floor. You know, I just, uh, uh, the fouls, you know, early on, obviously, hurt both teams. But uh, in a game like this, the whole country wants to see the best players on the floor. And unfortunately, we didn't get to play either one of us with, uh, with a full deck. Hopefully, we'll settle down. I just think that we're rushing instead of having great composure offensively and you know it's a 20-minute game the fact that we are up one really surprises me so maybe we'll we'll settle down all right thanks coach our halftime score tennessee by one over north carolina right now let's join trey wingo Mike, thanks very much. Welcome into the halftime show. Trey Wingo here with Carol Lawson and Stacy Dales. And I got to point this out right off the top. In our pregame special, we tried to put a music with these teams. <laughs> Carol Lawson said Tennessee was easy on the eye and easy on the ear. <laughs> Boy, were you lying. This game is brutal right now. Both teams shooting under 30%, the lowest scoring half of the season for both Tennessee and North Carolina. What's going on? Well, I think these teams have kind of underestimated their quick each other's quickness on the defensive end. You take a look at some plays from the first half. We'll start off with Tennessee in the help side defense by 
Alexis Hornbuckle. These are athletes. They're getting after it on the defensive end. You can't underestimate the speed. You have to be guarded at all times and know where the basketball is. Tremendous job by Tennessee of keeping Orlando Larkins not catching the ball. And then Candace Parker, the charges. There were multiple times in the first half where UNC players were quick enough to get under there. The gaps are smaller. Your window closes when you have athletes, Stacey. You have to be prepared quickly to get to, to make your play. No question. You know, this game really falls under the genre I picked for Rutgers and LSU, which was chopped hip-hop. This game has been ugly. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers for North Carolina. Take a look at some of these miscues. Tennessee has forced the Tar Heels into 15 turnovers. The difference, folks, however, is that Tennessee has not made the Tar Heels pay for those turnovers. Only six points off of turnovers. I think Tennessee, like Pat Summers said, needs to settle down, get a handle on what's going on in the second half, and come out with some poise. Sylvia Hatchell was right. They missed a ton of easy looks. They didn't score for the first five and a half minutes, and they're still in this thing. What's more troubling from a foul perspective? Ivy Ladder with three for Carolina, Candace Parker with two for Tennessee. Well, for me, it's Candace Parker. I think UNC is better equipped to handle the loss of Ivory Ladder because of Alex Miller. I think it's Ivory Latta. As emotional a player as she is and as physical a game as this is, this could affect the team in the second half. Well, we'll find out. Keep in mind that Tennessee is 3-0 all time against ACC teams in the Final Four. They got to play better to make it 4-0. When we return, C. Vivian Stringer of Rutgers will join us talking about her victorious semifinal win over LSU. You give a little love, and it all comes back to you. You're gonna be remembered for the things that you say and do. You give a little love, and it all comes back to you. Robbie Knievel buses and a canyon, a jet engine, and a double world record jump in the making. Sounds like he is about to come out. There he goes. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible scene, ladies and gentlemen. He is on fire. Robbie! Oh, my God. Oh, there's Robbie over there. Robbie, uh, let me just ask you a quick question. What happened? Did someone talk some sense into you? No, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us and most of will, us go, will pro. go pro in something, in something other, other than sports. In something other than sports. Go to NCAAstudent.org to find out how. Hey, Tiger, if his score was any higher, they would have charged us double. Uh-huh. Hey, Larry, you spent more time in the woods than a lumberjack. Oh, hey, guys, come on. Hey. Ah, <sighs> quiet tuning. Keeps the noise out. Everyone loves an upgrade, and now you can upgrade to the quality of Buick during the Buick Upgrade event. Use bonus cash to get an 07 Lucerne CX for under 24-2. Hurry, the Buick Upgrade event ends April 3rd. AT&T wants a special law in Tennessee so that it can save millions of dollars. AT&T likes to throw around the word competition, saying competition will mean better prices. But AT&T has actually said their video service will cost more than the average cable TV subscription. And in places where AT&T began providing television services, they've consistently raised prices. Don't let AT&T shortcut shortchange Tennesseans. For more information, visit KeepItLocalTennessee.com to contact your state legislator. We are at the break of the second semifinal. Rashonda McCants doing her part. Four of nine shooting, nine points. But the Tar Heels down by a point to Tennessee. Winner of this game awaits Rutgers in the title game as they took out LSU despite what the band was doing. The Scarlet Knights were ready to play. Sylvia Bowles, we thought, was the key guys, and Kia Vaughn just shut it out. Uh, Kia Vaughn was so physical with her. The battle for positioning was won by Rutgers, physical in every play. Yeah, Kia Vaughn, only four boards in this game, but she blocked out every single time. She was the most outstanding player in that game. Sylvia just two points in the first half, and suddenly they were raining threes, Rutgers was. Woo, Matias Javon, how about four big, big, big threes Javon. in the first half? 
And then that's his Carson will also be. Well, you take this Rutgers team offensively. If they knock down outside shots, I'm not sure there's a team in the country that can handle them. I think Steve Vivian Stringer might just agree with you. She knows she's going there. And in the second half, Rutgers up big, another big three. Rutgers goes on to cruise into the title game. The final score, 59-35. Just understand what they did. Rutgers held LSU to new Final Four records, and these aren't the records you want. Fewest points by a team, 35. Fewest points total, 94. Lowest field goal percentage. It's not like this is anything new for Rutgers. The last three teams they have played in this tournament, Duke, Arizona State, and LSU, all have come up with season lows in points. And joining us now on the Halftime Show is the orchestrator of that suffocating 55 defense, C. Vivian Stringer of Rutgers. Congratulations. Where was, we'll get to the defense in a minute. Where was that offense that came in the first half? 80% from deep. Uh, well, it started with the defense first. We felt, I mean, everything felt, thing felt well. We were moving in rhythm. Uh, got some nice dribble penetration sliding around, and uh, we were in a flow. Everyone seemed very calm, and that, that's really important. It seemed like whenever they needed one, Mati or Essence really knocked down those shots early, those deep ones. Did that get everybody sort of relaxed offensively? Uh, there's no question about it. We've got to get certain people started, so we start running patterns to get certain individuals, and if you notice, it, it was sprayed around so that we knew that everyone was capable of, you know, the kind of offensive firepower that we needed. When that happens, then we get uh, even that much more aggressive, feel that much more confident with the uh, defense side of things at one point you guys were on a pace for 80 this is not the Rutgers basketball we've expected but we did see that Vivian in the way you shut down Sylvia Fowles how were you able to do that um, well very clearly what we were doing is we recognized the, the shooters the outstanding shooters whether um, you know we realized that um, that the key to fouls was the people who were gonna make the pass in so we pressured the ball a great deal but with the four player, that is with Thomas, we slacked off and allowed for a double down. Kia was to push her clearly off the block, and we were doubling down quickly. As you know, she's got a really sweet hook shot. We doubled down, and she was going to have the room to create that hook shot. And, um, and, and the other point is, is that we were really doing a great job, I thought, at Kia Vaughn and, 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 and company, of uh, blocking uh, fouls out and everybody else going to the boards to take care well, of it. Well, just two of ten shooting for Sylvia Fowles, so whatever you did work, congratulations. You're playing the championship game Tuesday night. She'll either face Tennessee or North Carolina. Rutgers is there. Meanwhile, will North Carolina or will Tennessee get there? Ivory Latta in foul trouble. Three fouls in the first half. She only played 11 minutes. The second half coming up in just a little bit. IDARC Media is the official publisher of the Horizon Yellow Pages and home to superpages.com. Delivering billions of print and online searches every year. So anywhere, anytime, find the answers you need and the things you want from your home or anywhere else. IDARC Media. Saturdays, anyone can rock it on a Saturday. Give me something to look forward to on a Wednesday between my boss and my commute. Give me surround sound in my cubicle. Give me grilled chicken that keeps things light with an Asian glaze that keeps things interesting. Give me a half rack of ribs and a full rack of napkins. Give me the top down and a wide open lane. Give me a cedar seared salmon that only tastes expensive. Give me a new way to eat out. Smaller portions and prices so I can rock it any day I want. Life is short. Give me more Fridays. We represent the Coke brand, and we would love to somehow bring some kind of legal action against Coke Zero. There might be some taste infringement issues. Oh, so you're worried about... I think it's basic taste infringement. I'd like to stick with that phrase because that right, sounds really good to me. It's not a claim. It's not a claim. Could we sue them just to get it into court to to just just humiliate It'll be these people? It'll be, we, you'll be humiliated and you'll we'll get be fired. humiliated and, and fired. you'll get fired. I don't want that. Da, 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 da. Morning. I appreciate someone who's willing to listen. Hey! Take the air in the ball. Someone I can count on for great coverage. Somebody's got to get to the basket. That's why my go-to guy is my State Farm agent. For car insurance, nobody matches State Farm's combination of personal service and low rates. Even I can't argue with that. Get a quote today and see how your insurance matches up to number one. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Come in. 
looks like the med school scouts are out early today. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Download the guide for college bound students at NCAAstudent.org. Welcome back to our coverage of the NCAA Women's Final Four. Back to Cleveland in a second. First, a couple of notes for you. Morgan Pressel wins the first golf major of the season. The Kraft Nabisco, Suzanne Pedersen of Norway, had a four-shot lead with four holes to play, but she implodes. Morgan Pressel takes advantage, the youngest player ever to win a women's major. And the Mets winning 5-1, to one, but in a bit of a jam right now in St. Louis. Opening night of the big league season. These games count. Cardinals bases loaded, one out, pitching change in the bottom of the eighth. Keep updating on that and other stuff going on, but back out to Cleveland and Trey Wingo. All right, John, thanks. Welcome back to Cleveland. Guys, one-point game. Give me the transitions and the differences they have to make in the second half for both teams, and who do you think wins? Well, I think I'll start with Carolina, and the one thing that Carolina does better than anyone in the country, and that's re offensive rebound the basketball. Zero second-chance points for Carolina in the first half. They need to get some of those to win, although I do think Tennessee ultimately stays will win the game. I just think Tennessee needs to blow this thing open with some points in transition, only six points in transition for Tennessee and if you do that you get to the paint Tennessee needs to get to the paint and finish at the rim Nikki Anasicki and Shannon Bobbitt really the only ones stepping up offensively a big reason why because Candace Parker has not been in this game eight minutes is all she played in the first half she was cheering from the bench the problem was she was on the bench a one-point Lady Vols lead second half coming up in a little bit The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz. Say big at Orbitz.com. Just Orbitz and go. So, John and I are thinking of going to Cancun, if we can find a good deal. That's funny. So are Dan and I. It's time to play Take On Orbits. Today's players want a total vacation, hotel plus flight, and must save over $300. Go. I need a deal to Cancun. Oh, that's outrageous. Done. Congratulations. Thanks. It's that easy. Next time, Orbits and go. Honey, look at this. Is it for all of us? Yeah. $1,600 for a week? We can do that. Oh, yeah. The magic begins when you realize you can afford a Disney vacation. Other affordable packages all year long. Visit DisneyWorld.com slash affordable. They wear the school colors for a few fleeting years. Leave behind moments we'll always remember and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. That's why the NCAA Corporate Family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, the value lasts a lifetime. The cable industry is one of the great citizens of Tennessee. I first saw the internet on cable. Cable brought me the first picture I had that wasn't blurry. Cable feeds my family, brought me my job. And thousands of other solid, high-tech jobs. Cable's almost my lifeline to the world. Cable's a great citizen. Cable delivers for Tennessee today. How do you go green? Now there's no better way to go than in a new Toyota Prius. America's best-selling hybrid gets 60 MPG in the city. Now during Toyota's spring sales drive, get low 3.9 financing on any new 07 Prius or lease one for just $2.59 a month with only $19.99 due at signing. That's 3.9 financing or a special $2.59 a month lease on Prius. And be sure to ask about a special tax credit now available on Prius. That's Toyota value. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. What you your bad vibes on? Join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, 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 rock
like we're going to throw forearms all night because it's 22-21. Tennessee by a point at the half in probably the most physical women's basketball game I can never remember seeing. Yeah, this was not an easy one to be had, especially on the inside. I mean, you look at the Home Depot coaching adjustment. What you have to do against the pressure that Carolina comes at you with is stay spaced. Bobbitt turned it over early when she picked it up. Now, when she dribbles and passes through it, then you get numbers by virtue of a trap. It means if you beat it, you're going to have the advantage. Three on two, solid passing equals an easy deuce. Now, Candace Parker, I believe, will dominate in the second half. She had 27 and 10 in the first matchup. Foul trouble kept her out. If she doesn't get 15 points at the very least, I'll be stunned here in the second half. So will Tennessee because they are going to need her to get points like that. Parker with two fouls, Latta with three. It's not going to change the way North Carolina plays defense, though. They're going to come out and trap and push, try to force turnovers and get easy baskets. Pringle out all over Parker, 35 feet away from the hoop. And Parker was open for a second. Now she gets it back. Great feed to Anna Sicki. Anna Sicki quietly put together an outstanding half of basketball. Steal by Bobbitt. She waits for help. Parker into the lane. Dishes. And somehow gets it back. And now good head fake by Spencer. Spencer with a miss the rebound to Orlando Watkins. Latta. Got it to Pringle. She's guarded man to man by Anna Sicky. Great defense by Anna Sicky. Just stood flat footed and waited for Pringle to go up. She had as good a half as any player for the Lady Vols. She boarded it, she blocked shots, and she rebounded it. Both teams having terrible shooting nights courtesy of the other team's defense. Pringle stripped by Anasicki on the way up. The tie-up gives the ball back to Tennessee. Sylvia Hatchell urging on the troops as the Tennessee crowd gets on its feet. She wants this full court pressure. Nice pass to Bobbitt right over the head of Lau. She waits for her counterpart. Pringle's doing a really good job on Parker that far out from the bucket. She struggled on offense, Pringle, but she's been excellent on defense. Parker's short with a jump shot. Parker got her hands on the rebound to Anna Sicki. Parker wheels in the lane, scooping a bucket. She draws an inordinate number of fouls on her opponent, and when you get her isolated in the post, as they do here against Larkin, she does an outstanding job of feeling with her backside, rolls right to the rim and scores it. A full third of the fouls against Tennessee are committed against Candace Martin. ESPN Full Circle presents the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship Tuesday at 8.30. Huh. Calories provide energy, but how much energy do you need? Powerade Auction, the low-calorie sports drink. The road to happiness. Lots of twists and turns. Three. Have you found yourself yet? Because you're right here. Seriously. Happiness doesn't have to hurt like that. Security? Put your money in an orange savings account. It's all gain, no pain. But pain is the path to joy. Whatever. High interest, no fees, no minimums. Your money grows, you don't get bent out of shape. The road to happiness is a beautiful thing. Saturdays, anyone can rock it on a Saturday. Give me something to look forward to on a Wednesday between my boss and my commute. Give me surround sound in my cubicle. Give me grilled chicken that keeps things light with an Asian glaze that keeps things interesting. Give me a half rack of ribs and a full rack of napkins. Give me the top down and a wide open lane. Give me a cedar seared salmon that only tastes expensive. Give me a new way to eat out. Smaller portions and prices so I can rock it any day I want. Life is short. Give me more Fridays. They pick up touchdowns. 
pick up the bucks and pick up their teams. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. So I think the meeting went really well. Great job, Abby. I wish some of our managers worked as hard as you do. Oh, well, I guess you'll just have to promote me to manager then, huh? Oh, there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> I, I, uh, I understand that I have to work my way up, though. Singular is now the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Now get an ultra-thin Samsung phone for only $19.99. Every possession matters. Take white pride in every possession. It's a game of possessions. It's also a game of wheels. See how tough we are. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! doing the importance of every single possession. But uh, I don't know what's more important right now, an angry All-American or an All-American on the bench. As Candace Parker just came off the floor that time, she walked over to her teammates and started yelling in the huddle, they don't want me to play. I have a feeling she's getting ready to put one on North Carolina because she was so frustrated with being on the bench in the first half, Doris. Well, if she reacted well, I, I'll tell you, Holly, I'll be surprised if she doesn't get at least 15. She's three points in, and there's the other All-American responding. Quickly back the other way. Anna Sicki just totally ignored the shot. Bobbitt fired out of the corner. Latta with five points and two assists. She's the all-time leading scorer in North Carolina history. Number two all-time in assists. And because of foul trouble, she has been a non-factor. It was the biggest lead of the game. Now it's been cut to one. That was one of those layups Sylvia Hatchell addressed with Mark Jones just prior to the half. Parker loves to back in, does not get the roll. Ball's knocked out of bounds out to the heels. Well, Ivory Latta has got to get some points on the board because this is when she reacts. A little up fake gets the defense sold. Nice head fake, a simple game, Mike. Boy, there is another huge screen, and Bobbitt going to shake the cobwebs as she was thrilled again. <laughs> Well, this is up to your teammate to call the screen. Bobbitt has got great speed. Communication, or the lack thereof, can put your teammate in harm's way. Sure call it out. That's unfair to your point guard. Somebody has got to let her know. I mean, that's on the verge of getting a concussion when you get nailed like that. Well, that's a good, clean play. That's Carolina making a solid attempt to sure. free their point guard. 18 turnovers. Let's go to Mark Jones. Mark. Guys, as Bobbitt came off the court being subbed out, she glanced over the Carolina bench, which was cheering very spiritedly at the hit that she just took. But the look that she gave the Carolina bench said, hey, it's going to take a lot more than that to knock me out of this game. Back to you. <laughs> she is tough. There's no doubt about it. Parker off balance on the jumper. Missed it badly. Boy, and that should be a foul on McCants. McCants just took somebody and threw him to the ground. Now, this is weak side of the floor. Their arms are tangled. So, I, you know what? Their arms Maybe. are tangled. I don't think that's a foul. I think it's a good no call. You could be right. Missed point blank by Hornbuckle. Little got the roll. Nice touch by Camille Little, the senior from Winston-Salem. She has a half dozen, and the heels are on top. Candace Parker raised the stakes in this basketball game when she told the reporter yesterday that today amounted to the national championship. She angered the semifinal teams, and the level yep. of intensity in this one is higher than maybe it would be otherwise. Beautiful drive, but no finish as Augusti got underneath, too far underneath the basket, and hit the bottom of the support on the way up. Lad, a beautiful pass to Little, double team partially blocked from behind by Hornbuck. 
Well, the defense has been tough. Spencer just can't buy one from outside. How about the block? Yes. That is just great defense. They talk about go-go gadget arms. We see you, Latoya Pringle. Pringle, the single season shot block leader in Carolina history. Why would you ask me out? Clearly, this is the package that you were drawn to. And then, what? Let's put the top down? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Because I have a lot invested here. I know that this looks effortless. Yes, it's time to vacation. Dollar Millionaire style. Road trip. With outstanding McDonald's fries and outlandish leg room, this cabin is first class all the way. Oh, these people don't fly coach. But they're pretty fly. They're also decked up with decadent double cheeseburgers and other dollar menu delicacies. No, they don't need a five-star hotel. They've got five million. They told me to get a miniature poodle. Or a nice little chihuahua. But I've always set my heart on a Great Dane. And since my heart valve surgery is in the hands of America's number one heart center, I figure I'll do all right. He's perfect for rehabilitation exercises. Find the confidence to face any condition at Cleveland Clinic. Mr. Hadley, would you like a Coke? Never had one. What else haven't I done? Hello? Doris? Huh? I've always loved you. Bombs away. Mr. Hadley. A convertible. <laughs> Absolutely not. Because, you know, I get freezing. First of all, very freezing all the time. Uh, ever since I was a condition that I've had since. Uh, you know, I know it's a metaphor, but I think I actually, I actually do have ice water in my veins. Poetic, but makes the winter months particularly difficult. ESPN's coverage of the 2007 NCAA Women's Final Four broadcast in high definition and presented by Olivia. 28-27, North Carolina over Tennessee with 15.45 to go in the ballgame. And because of foul trouble, the two consensus All-Americans, Candace Parker and Ivory Latta, have been non-factors in this game. Both have avoided additional fouls in the second half. Points in the paint have been incredibly hard to come by. You've got athletes who are outstanding shot blockers as well. Uh, Tennessee extending that defense with a 2-2-1. Half court. Barely caught by Larkin. Latta. She's the best three-point shooter for her career that they've ever had, 39%. Against that zone, that skip pass is so hard to contend with because the defense has got to cover too much ground. 31-27 North Carolina. The heels on a 10-0 run. Parker's getting some looks, hasn't been able to make anything, and Sidney Spencer hasn't been able to buy a bucket. She averages almost 12 points a game. Quickly down, Portman of the basket for a little. To be a little with eight, that's a 12-0 run. The lead is grown to six, the biggest in the ball game for North Carolina. How many times have we seen that? Position arrow to Tennessee. The ball wedged in there on the jumper by Bobbitt. That qualifies as a jump ball situation. Ivory Latta gets a pass from the nation's best passing post player. Stretch the defense with the skip pass and then the electrifying fast break. When it's at its best, it is so dangerous. Little the recipient of a feed from Latta. Possession arrow gives the ball back to Tennessee. Alexis Hornbuckle cuts it away. Alexis Hornbuckle. 5'11 with great elevation and body control. Nice drive. She is hard to guard when she gets inside that free throw line. But that is only her first bucket of the ball game. Good drive by Little. 
Picked off, though, by Bobbitt. All the way blocked. What a job by McCants. What defense by McCants. That is as good an athletic play as you're going to see in the country, men or women, regardless of gender. That was beautiful. Ladder with a floater. Kept it alive. Little into the lane. And she's fouled. Foul will be on Spencer, number three on Spencer. Rashonda McCants is just a sophomore. She's got great speed, and she baits Shannon Bobbitt into taking the shot because she knew that was the best opportunity for a block. Holy, because this is a sensational athletic play. Not only the block, but how about the ability to keep it in bounds? Exactly. And Bobbitt thought she had her. Bobbitt thought she had it measured for the layup with a nice fake. And now Bobbitt's going to come out of the ball game. So is Spencer as Pat Summit goes to her bench. Mike, that is a new generation play right there. Candace Parker, Sylvia Fowles, Rashonda McCants. That kind of athleticism is now starting to dictate the outcome of women's games, and that's why the game is changing. Pringle comes back in, and Larkins will get a breather at the 13-46 mark. Boy, and that was pretty. That was not only athletic, it was smart. They are second in the country in block shots per game. They're already at their season average, and it, it goes beyond the block. It was the ability to keep it in balance. And here is that athletic defense that has served them so well all year long. McCants with another bucket. She has 11. And it's 36 29. And a second nearly lost it. 15 on the shot clock, and Hornbuckle will reset the offense. Got a screen from Parker down at seven on the shot clock. Hornbuckle a little bit out of control. Anna Sicky with four. Got it back to Hornbuckle. She fires before the shot clock expires. But look at this. Breeland ahead of everybody. <laughs> Pat Summit really upset with her club. They failed to get back on defense. Two possessions in a row, and it cost them. Carolina on defense is scrambling. Tennessee has no idea what they want to do. It's resulting in bad shots and bad floor balance. The strip, they're up in the passing lanes. They specialize in this. Get up and make you make mistakes. And this is Rashonda McCants off the steal to Jessica Freeland. Carolina is out and running, and it's a 17-2 Carolina run. They spurt you right out of the building, Mike Patrick. 17 of their 38 points coming in this one run. In a nine-point game, the way scoring has been at a premium, that makes that lead a lot bigger than nine points. That's, exactly, that's a great point. And points in the paint have not been easy to come by. Rutgers, the winner of the earlier game, eliminating LSU, the Tigers, four straight. Final four appearances, but Rutgers knocked them off again. Let's go to Holly Rowe. The Pat Summit was fired up in that last huddle right there. She looked at her team and said, you guys look like you're scared of their defense. Are you scared of them? She's challenging them to be sharp on their passes, quit playing scared, and attack the rim. They're going to need some offense here, Holly. Whistle away from the ball and a foul. Camille Little commits her third. It looks like she was holding Candace Parker away from the ball. And Parker's always going to get that kind of attention. McCants will get a breather. And Sylvia Hatchell able to substitute liberally right now with a good lead. That's a travel. Dominique Redding, the senior from Clearwater, Florida, travel. For live stats and game recaps from every round of every championship, go to NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Mike Patrick, Doris Burke, Holly Rowe, Mark Jones, our entire ESPN crew with you from the women's final four in Cleveland. Two number one seeds fighting it out. And right now, North Carolina with a big nine-point advantage. Breland double-teamed, got it back. Tries the scoop shot. 
hoping for a foul. She looked at the referee as soon as she let the ball go. Parker kicks it out based on somebody's got to start scoring after Redding. Her first basket, Doris. You see Parker's unselfishness. They have given her a lot of attention. She's been willing to give the basketball up, but her teammates have got to support her here and score. At some time, don't you have to be more selfish than that? Well, I think if you get shot opportunities, you can't pass them up if you're hurt. This one's knocked away. The pass down board too strong. There was no reason to throw it away. They had an easy layup. There's a time Tried a 45-foot pass and threw it in the stands. The Wade Trophy winner, State Farm Wade Trophy winner, was Candace Parker. The rake and the take, the unselfishness to Dominic Redding. They're within seven. It's time to play Take On Orbits. This week's winner is you. That's right, you. Go to Orbits.com during the Hotel Mega Sale and save $100 on five nights at select hotels nearly anywhere in the world. Just Orbits and go. Anyone can rock it on a Saturday. Give me something to look forward to on a Wednesday. Give me a half rack of ribs and a full rack of napkins. Give me a cedar seared salmon that only tastes expensive. Give me smaller portions and prices so I can rock it any day I want. Give me more Fridays. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. What are you being charged for internet service? I don't know, maybe $24? $23.90. What are you being charged for internet service? $10.95. $10.95. Millions are discovering the real value of People PC Online. Go to PeoplePC.com now to try us free for 30 days. You get unlimited internet access for only $10.95 a month. People PC Online has a smart dialer with more local access numbers than AOL for faster, more reliable connections. You even get security tools to help protect you from spam, pop-ups, and email viruses. And you can continue to use your favorite instant messenger. Compare us side-by-side -side with your current ISP. Go to peoplepc.com and start saving today. So the next time you're asked how much you pay, proudly declare 1095. Go online or call 1-800-864-4785. People PC Online, a better way to internet. Time for the Pontiac game-changing performance of this round in the semis had to be the three-point shooting of Rutgers. 50% from deep for the game, 80% in the first half. They play for the title. For their efforts, Pontiac donates $5,000 to the General Scholarship Fund. Eight out of ten in the first half really made the difference. And as Gino Oriama said, uh, between games, if Rutgers shoots like, shoot like that, they are going to be awfully hard for anybody to beat. Yeah, I agree, because they do such a nice job of taking away an opponent's strength, making you play to your weaknesses on the offensive end. Pat Summit, their coaching staff, trying to figure out what they can do in the final 11-34. Down by seven points. They just threw away a pass on the previous possession. It could have cut it to five. They're going to have Bobbitt back in the ballgame. She saw Sidney Spencer on the bench. She has been no factor at all. Bobbitt hasn't been much of a factor. Two out of ten from the floor. No assists and two turnovers. Well, look at this. Spencer and Hornbuckle in the first matchup on December 3rd. Three for 20. Tonight, two for 15. A good skip pass to Miller. Got the bounce. Her first bucket of three, and she gets the shooter's bounce. Nikki Anasicki has done her part. She has done a stellar job guarding Elena Larkins on the post. She's blocked some shots. This has been a disjointed offensive effort after a stellar offensive performance against Ole Miss by Tennessee. Parker baseline jumper, no. Offensive rebound, follow, no. Parker's there again, blocked from behind. Parker again, and she fouled. Pringle just kept going up with her. 
Kept getting a piece of the ball, but finally the foul. Well, great persistence. Redding misses the first. Parker's on the weak side of the glass. She misses some chippies because the ball goes length. That arms are everywhere inside. You like her persistence, but you wonder how frustrated she is at this moment. Three on Pringle, and Parker will go to the line. Seven points tonight. Let's go to Holly. Candace Parker was the only college player selected to play on the U.S. senior women's team this last summer. She was the second, third leading scorer, second leading rebounder, but Candace told us that the most important thing she had was time with players like Tina Thompson, Tamika Catchings. She said she learned from those players that she has to be more intense and more aggressive all the time on both ends of the floor. We saw some of that increased intensity on that last fight for that rebound. And Pat Summit says she's a different player since she came back this summer. And Holly Catchings, a real hero for her. McCants, nice drive, went right by Parker. Well, that's an example of where Candace Parker gave up on a possession, and that's inexcusable in a national semifinal. You do not give up that kind of dribble drive that easily. What a night for McCants. 13 points, 9 rebounds, 5 steals. 3 won't go for Redding. Again, she's only a 28% long-range shooter. North Carolina has soon assumed control here in the last three, four minutes. Good ball movement. Lata open for three. Short on the jumper. Parker got clobbered from behind. That's on Little, I believe. And if it is, her fourth. And it is. Number four on Camille Little. The 6'2 senior. So the coaching is too good for somebody like Parker to come down at the other end of the court and try to rest. Because they're going to find her. They're going to make her work on defense. Well, and Pat has said she has come so far in that regard. The, the reference that Holly made to that USA national team, she was the best player on the floor for long stretches. And that includes the United States and the Australian national team that's got Lauren Jackson. So that speaks volumes about how good she is. Yes, it does. Foul at the baseline as Hornbuckle drove. And got the foul from, I believe, Alex Miller. There's your foul trouble. Four, three, and three, respectively. Lattice done a nice job through the first 10 plus minutes of not getting another one. Spencer trying to get on track. She's been able to do virtually nothing offensively. Only five points tonight for Spencer. And she's a very good long-range shooter as well. Just hasn't been able to do anything. Good steal by Bob. A tremendous anticipation. They've got numbers. Hornbuckle knocks it down. Great defense. Bobbin has brought the energy and the toughness. And if they come back, they've got this kid to pay. She has not quit. Well, Pringle set another screen. That would have been the trifecta as far as screen tonight. Lana, good job. Just blows by. Basket and the foul. Ivory Lana gets the call on Anna Sicky. Her third. What a great first step. How about the crossover leaving something special in her wake goes right at the rim. That is a ankle-breaking crossover and then the pose. Strike the pose. Lada out of McConnell, South Carolina. On everybody's all everything list the top three for every award you could possibly think of. And she is just tougher than a $2 steak. <laughs> or tougher than what I cook. <laughs> <laughs> that one just hung on the rim for Hornbuckle. I don't think she can believe she missed that shot. Lada back the other way. 8.25 and counting. The lead is back to 10. Larkins against Anna Sicki. And Anna Sicki just looked at her teammate and barked. Help when I get beat on the baseline. 
North Carolina, you can see it in their eyes. They think they have this game. Hornbuckle. Great ball movement for Tennessee. Lana gets it across to Miller. He's going to hold up and wait for help. Good decision by Miller. Loose ball, another steal. Two on one. Hornbuckle will take it. And tremendous contact. Players go down. No call. I like the no call. You know what? There is no advantage, disadvantage. The defense is not in great position. Dick Cantner is one of the best in the game. I like that no call. Indeed, she is. She's incredibly consistent in the way she calls it. Yes. Game. No, that's exactly right, Mike. You know what to expect. 48 40. Sylvia Hatchell wants a timeout. The game still hanging in the balance with 7.13 to go. Well, Ivory Lad is starting to percolate, and when she scores, her emotions come out, and the level of her team is raised. Go ahead, Ivory. We see you. N O, as in no, Stan. We are not getting a convertible. What are you going to want next, huh? An amp? <laughs> that is rich. This sure brings me back. To when? Five minutes ago? You never had that. Never had a Coke before? You think I've gone soft in That's the head? That's Coke Zero. The 13th president was Millard Fillmore. Uh, okay. Do you know what the capital of Djibouti is? My The capital of Djibouti is Djibouti. Don't try to tell me I've never had a Coke before. <laughs> Got a mind like a steel trap. Da, 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 da. Enjoy Cokeness at MyCokeRewards.com. Don't think of them as tools. This is not a saw, it's a deck. So we can grill out. And this, this is a shelf for our vacation pictures. And this, okay. this, okay, really? It's the Home Depot Tool Event. Get an instant 35 to $500 off from power tools and wet dry vacs to generators and more, now through April 11th. So this is my nice clean garage, right? The Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Once upon a time, darkness and cold filled the world until Prometheus stole fire from the gods. Quickly, the flame passed until light and warmth filled the earth. That is the story of our industry, to spread the light and warmth of hospitality. We're tracking hospitable acts across the globe. Get on the map by sending us your story at BeHospitable.com. The Hilton Family. I've got a lot going on up here <laughs> because it's my art it's my craft and I find that when you put the top down on your convertible it's a little disrespectful <laughs> I don't want to say anything but the NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz is brought to you by Pontiac the official performance machines of the NCAA U2 from Dublin, Ireland, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2005. They have sold 170 million albums worldwide. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Candace Parker just came to the bench, and she looked at her teammates and said, we need five stops. Do we have five stops in us? The teammates nodded their head. Pat Summit came over and said, we are not going home without a championship. Slammed her fist on the whiteboard and then said, hey, can we play out of our 13 defense right here? Candace Parker said, no, no, we're getting hurt on that. Pat relented. They're coming out of zero on this possession. Good input from the coach and the players. Holly, one second on the shot clock. <laughs> Tip. Clock didn't start for a second, and now it is going to be a shot, shot clock violation. So Tennessee will have the ball down by eight. Hey. You're counting. That's one stop. There's a field goal percentage by half. Both were abysmal in the first half. Tennessee continues to be so, and that is why North Carolina has got an eight-point advantage. Got the partner, the All-American. This is where the Stars have to step up. There's an air ball from Bobbitt. Spencer just can't buy one. That's 
Hornbuckle's sixth rebound to give him a second look, but let's get Candace Parker some touches and let her attack the basket. I think she's got to take over this game. She cannot be reluctant. Pringle, good defense that time by Parker. All over, got the rebound. Hustling it down the other way. Hornbuckle. Parker tried to keep it alive. Bodies flying everywhere. Maybe on McCants. That's two stops. Yes. It's only one on McCants. Now, the only way the stops help you at all, you got to score at the other end. That was the 16th foul against North Carolina. The next one will be in the one and one. It's a dangerous pass just to get the ball in bounds. Hanasecki gives it back to Spencer. Parker, that's what she likes to have the ball. Moves into a double team. They're going to call it for travel. It's a good call. I thought she slid that pivot foot. I think D. Cantner was in perfect position, and it was the right call. And really good help defense forced it. Bottom of your screen, yeah. no question about it. 19, Tennessee Turner. It's going to be an offensive foul, illegal screen. Break out the gloves for two opening day Major League Baseball games on ESPN on Monday. First at 1 Eastern, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays against the Yankees. Then at 4 Eastern, the Red Sox from Kansas City to face the Royals. Opening day built by the Home Depot on ESPN tomorrow. Both games also available in high definition on ESPN HD. That was the second foul on the Kansas. Now we're down to 5 minutes and 29 seconds in an 8-point game. Boy, good double team by the heel. Parker was wide open, and Asiki couldn't get the ball up in her hand to make the pass. 17 foul. I think this is now in the bonus. Tennessee on this foul is, is now shooting free throws from here on out. Pringle picked up her fourth foul, and Anna Sicki, who is only a 62% free throw shooter, and tonight only three out of six. She missed her first three. Now Parker is going to go to the bench. Like she's got some blood on her uniform or her leg. Not sure if she is cut. And I, I believe she is. They just put a band aid on it. And now they'll wrap it. Tennessee, to go along with 18 turnovers, has not shot the ball well from any position. No, that's. You can't live with that. You don't have any chance to win. Still, they're down only eight. And Anna Sicki at the line. Now these are big free throws because it's in the bonus. You make the first, you get a second. Got the roll. Anna Sicki with a triple major. 3.76 GPA. I had three majors, but not at once. <laughs> Here comes the pressure by Tennessee. 48-42. Can they use their defense to turn over the heels? Lad, a great ball movement, got it a little. Two on one, little offensive foul! And she is fouled out of the ball game. Sydney Spencer, who had done almost nothing offensively, draws a huge oh. Yeah, and I'm not sure I agree with this. This exact play is what Dee Cantner let go on the opposite end. Sylvia Hatchell, you've got a gripe. I do not think that this should be a foul. This is absolutely a good sell by Sydney Spencer. Yep. It's I nothing agree. but a good, that's great acting. But you have, as an official, Dee Cantner let that one go on the opposite side. You cannot give Carolina a charge there. Well, that's the consistency that you always want from an officiating crew. 
that what's going to be called five minutes ago is going to be called the same way now. So little is gone. Pringle has four. Latta has had three since the first half and has done a tremendous job of not getting in any more trouble. Nobody with more than three for Tennessee. Parker hasn't picked up any in the second half. But this gives Tennessee another opportunity to cut into that lead. It's only six now. North Carolina has not had a basket in a little over three minutes. Tennessee is getting its chance. Can they come through? Or will Carolina's defense save the day? Kansas Parker double team. Bad pass. Parker threw it right in the hands of Larkin. Somehow, Bob had got it back. Boy, she's been a savior for them, has She's not quit on a single play throughout the entire game. And a second to Parker. Short, great defense by Pringle. She got it back, and she's fouled. Well, Parker didn't quit working on that possession. It's on Pringle. She's gone. Well, that's monumental. She does a very good job of making it a tough shot, but there is absolutely contact as Parker continues to pursue the ball. So now they have lost two players who combined for 13 and a half rebounds. Little and Pringle. Larkins is still their best rebounder. She's out there. But you can't lose two people of that quality and not feel it. Now, I think you come with Jessica Breland, who is a freshman and is playing the most important four minutes and 35 seconds of her career right now. She doesn't get that many minutes, but she is really productive. Four and a half rebounds a game in limited time on the court. But she is not the defender that Latoya Pringle is. Now Parker, 70% free throw shooter. Eight points tonight. Four out of five from Milan. These are huge with 435 left. This finally would put some pressure on Carolina, which has been playing really loose here in the second half. Somebody has got to answer on the offensive end yes. for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Well, my money's on the ladder. Well, that's your consensus All-American. She's been the answer for four years. They move her to the off-guard position, perhaps freeing her for more shot opportunities. Another steal, and a sick. He's going to wait for help. Nice decision there. Bobbitt picked up by Miller. Four oh seven and counting. Parker backs in, reverse under the basket, got it. 48-46. Tennessee on a 10 nothing run. And Parker with a double-double, and they're just going to ride the horse. The heels working on four and a half minutes without a bucket. Lana, that's a blocking foul. And that's a good call because Spencer was moving. And that will send Lana to the free throw line where she's nearly automatic. And Spencer picks up her fourth foul. Candace Parker operating on the baseline. Larkins has now got the task with the other two players fouled out. She uses her length, her athleticism to get right around and pass some saying, yes, we're back in it, folks. N-O, as in no, Stan. We are not getting a convertible. What are you going to want next, huh? An amp? <laughs> that is rich. You know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but my mobile broadband network is powerful. I told you that. Television. Okay. But your mobile broadband network only works here. So where does your network work? Pretty much here. Can I check my email on your computer? Sure. Thanks. Singular has mobile broadband coverage in more cities worldwide than Sprint. Singular, now the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Now get the laptop connect card for only $49.99. Jerome Bettis? Call me the bus. <gasps> if you want to go the distance, 
Oh, you need something tougher. Mobile Clean 5000. A synthetic? Nope, it's conventional. The only one guaranteed for 5,000 miles. Most car makers recommend oil drains beyond 3,000 miles. That's why tougher men demand Mobile Clean 5000. Going the distance, like 13,662 career rushing yards. You're a lucky man. Mobile Clean 5000. Seriously tough oil. Anyone can rock it on a Saturday. Give me something to look forward to on a Wednesday. Give me a half rack of ribs and a full rack of napkins. Give me a cedar seared salmon that only tastes expensive. Give me smaller portions and prices so I can rock it any day I want. Give me more Fridays. Calories provide energy, but how much energy do you need? Powerade Option, a low-calorie sports drink. Having a hot wife can be a real drag. You know, guys are always checking her out. Now she wants to get a convertible? Yeah, right. She should get a, a beige box with tinted windows. You'll be trying to check her out, and you'll just check out you. She's my wife! I think a lot of the players that are on the team, if not most of them, have come to the University of Tennessee because of the history and because of Coach Summit and what she's done for women's basketball. I know that if you're not playing for a national championship, the season's deemed as a failure, and I think everybody understands that and wanted that challenge coming to the University of Tennessee. And for Pat Summit, six national championships on her resume. Her record, 945 and 180. She may get to 1,100 wins before she gets to 200 losses. It's just an unbelievable record. But Latta trying to add one to that loss list tonight as she hits a free throw. She is number one all time in North Carolina history shooting free throws. Her career average is 84%. 13 points for Ivory Latta. The lead is back to four. For the second half has been as good as the first half was bad. Generally, they run a back screen for Parker when they put her out here. There's the back screen. She's going to come to the strong side and let her operate. Feeds it to Anna Sicki, who had a really good look at the basket and decided to go across the lane and put it up from there. Mark Jones, what do you have? Guys, during the last North Carolina timeout, Coach Hatchell told each and every team member to get their hands in the middle and put their hands on a bundle of sticks that they have that they keep under the bench. They're like tongue depressors now. Each one of them has a motivational saying on them. They're held together by a group of elastic bands. The moral to the team is, hey, one stick you can break, but all of them tied together are unbreakable, guys. This is not the time for us to break. That was the message to the team. How do coaches come up with this stuff? <laughs> I mean, you gotta stay up all night to think of this stuff. 50 to 48, the lead is two. But whatever works, works. This is gonna be a Larkins or a ladder shot attempt. Ladder picked up her dribble and has to call timeout. She was in danger of a five second call, smart enough to realize it. If you joined us late, Rutgers and LSU battled in the first game. And the All-American 6'6 center Sylvia Fowles struggled in that ball game. Tremendous defense by Rutgers. Essence Carson unloaded for three. So did Adjavon as they showed eight out of ten three-point shooting in the first half. Kiavon had a big game inside and Rutgers won it going away 59 to 35. They'll face the winner of this one. My question to you is off of what you have seen of these two teams in this semifinal, can Rutgers win on Tuesday night? I think they can by virtue of their defense. I said when they won the regional final, if there was one team they would have trouble with, it would be Carolina because of the volume of points per game Carolina typically gets. But tonight, that's no indication. You've got to use another one here. And this, folks, will be costly down the stretch. You cannot inbound the basketball. You're down to one timeout. With a two-point lead. Well, you mentioned that it's 
it's a situation that North Carolina would score so many points that Rutgers couldn't possibly keep up. But right here we see with 309 to go in the ball game, North Carolina has only scored 50 points. Does that give hope to Rutgers fans? I don't think there's any question. I, I go back to the point Gino Oriema made in between games, and he has faced Rutgers more than anybody three times, in fact, this season. He said when they make shots from the perimeter like they did in that game, they're hard to beat because they hold you to such a low points per game. So they make shots. It says good an offensive team as Vivian Stringer has had in a very long time. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Ball knocked out of bounds by who else? Bobbitt. Five two little package of dynamite. See, Camille Little's usually a great option to inbounds to because she's got great size and ups, and now they don't have that option. Here's Larkins for the same purpose. Latta with the shot clock at seven. She's going to have to do it on her own. Gets a screen. Double team. Back outside, McCants. Knocked away, saved by Parker, and McCants is down holding her leg. We just have to hope it's a cramp. Boy, she is in obvious discomfort. <laughs> Fell and grabbed the side of her knee. No contact. And didn't didn't seem to come down awkwardly and the way they're pressing on that foot that's that's a very good sign that looks like a cramp it sure doesn't hurt any less but it's it's a great sign but now McCants is going to have to be taken off and get some medical attention Pringle has fouled out little has fouled out Larkins is still in there but you're running out of size you're running out of quality experienced player. Yeah, Jessica Breland is now checked into the basketball game again. You've got Miller and Latta in the backcourt. But that's a freshman coming in for a sophomore. You've had a senior and a junior foul out. McFarland is in the basketball game. She averages about 10 minutes, so you are stretching this depth as much as you possibly can if you're Carolina. Tennessee can tie with a two, take the lead with a three. Hornbuckle. Miller doing a really good job. Hornbuckle may have gotten away with a push. And a sicky. No. Oh, what good defense by Larkin. Look at Latta. Oh, the All-American showing you everything she's got right now. Missed that shot. Her counterpart, All-American, Parker to Anasicki with the left hand. No! Anasicki foul! Holy cow! The reason they score that is Elena Larkins was so slow up the floor, she's exhausted, Mike Patrick. And Anasicki and Bob have brought the toughness, and neither has quit on a single play all night. Under two minutes, another steal. That's a foul on Breland. She held Anna Sicki after she swiped the ball. No surprise, it's Nikki Anna Sicki who's been all over the floor along with Shannon Bobbin. Candace Parker brings it up. The pass is quick, and look at how slow Carolina is up the floor. They had numbers to start, they have numbers to finish. Carolina looks tired to me. Look at Larkins huffing and huffing. Ladder would seem to be where the offense has to come from. And Anna Sicki, the chink in her armor, a 62% free throw shooter, who has struggled with this game from the line. So we're still tied. She's at 7 of 11. The biggest lead for the Heels was 12 points. They're in danger of losing it here. A 
Tennessee by one. Bring it up against Warren Buckley. Two starters left for North Carolina. Larkins and Lada. The rest are subs. One injury, two foul outs. Lada keeps the ball. The, the ball did not touch the rim. Shot clock is down to three. Lada sees it now and fires. No. Warren Buckley with a rebound. Tennessee with the ball in a one-point lead. What a tough situation for the Heel. Right now, they are outmanned because of foul troubles and an injury. And the chance is set to check back in. Tennessee uses one, so it's two for them and one for North Carolina remaining. So obviously, it was a cramp she'll be able to come back in the ball game. The last seven champions, Connecticut with four of the seven. Notre Dame, Baylor, and Maryland. That means Tennessee has not won it the last seven years, which is amazing for Tennessee. And North Carolina hasn't won it since 94 when Sylvia Hasbro got her only championship. I said that I thought Camille Little was tired, Mike Patrick. She has had to deal, or excuse me, I said that Erlena Larkins was tired. She's had to deal with Candace Parker of late. The matchup inside, because of the two foul outs, she's chasing Candace Parker all over the floor. It's great deny. She's got better speed than that body would indicate, but she's fatigued. A minute one to go to the right to play for the national championship. Hornbuckle, Tennessee leads by one. Hornbuckle, nice fake, got to the baseline, and Breland was right there waiting for it. 15-second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Latta into a double team. Lost it! And then Latta commits, or Miller commits the foul against Parker, and boy, is Miller upset. The whole North Carolina cheering section is up that They thought it was a foul on the double team. The Carolina continues to reject shot after shot on the interior. Great block, block by Brillen. Here comes a trap. Great recognition by Hornbuckle and Parker. That's a big trap. They wanted a foul call. I think it's a good no call. So Parker at the free throw line. Parker, 29 turnovers against North Carolina. Two free throws can make it a three-point game. Parker scoring in the second half. Now she has 13. Now even, Seven out of eight, Doris. Yeah, and even if she makes this, though I know it makes it a three-point advantage with this much time, if Carolina and you can get a quick deuce, you can get that. Put them on the free throw line. Ideally, somebody other than Parker. second one. It is a three-point lead. Here comes Lada. And she is fouled by Hornbuck. It's only the sixth team foul. So that right there by Hornbuckle was a good defensive play. Not yet in the bonus. You impede her path to the basket. And now there's only a tenth of a second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. And again, Mike, you do not need the three. Full you still have time for multiple oh, possessions, so if you get a quick, easy look at a two, you can take it. Otherwise, you look for a good, uncontested, clean look at a three. Coming up after the game, Stuart Scott and Kenny Mayne will have Sports Center. A lot more from Cleveland as we review the two national semifinals. The men's finals, take your pick of that one tomorrow and Major League Baseball's opening day. Remember I said when they had to use that timeout, they used two. Yep. One to set a play, the other to inbound the basketball. That was an absolute waste. And at a time when you need those timeouts, Mike, you don't have them left. Well, you said they'd be critical, and right now they are. North Carolina is out of those precious timeouts. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Candace Parker trying to be a leader for her team, knocking down those free throws. And as she came to the bench, she yelled at all of her teammates, guys, it's right there. It's right there. We have to grab it. 
Well, they're only 30.1 seconds away, Holly. But North Carolina, you can bet they're not done yet. Heather Clater will come to the ball game when they come back on the floor. Clater, a very good three-point shooter. And here is, let's see, the possession arrow favors North Carolina. That's huge. One more foul will be in the bonus, but they have to shoot one and one, and boy, what pressure that is. Yeah, and four for 12 from three-point territory on the season, 33%. So Clater is on the floor to get a clean look at a three. Now, if they don't get it, they foul, and she's got to go out. Ladder for three. No. Hornbuckle fouled by Ivory Ladder. That's her fourth. Well, she had a good look at it. You know, a lot of people get on her because she trash talks a lot. She's very verbal on the court, really goes after people. She got a love her spirit. Oh, what a player. The Carolina men blew a lead. It was a seven point lead with 11 plus minutes for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Horn buckle. She gets two. Either one is huge. If she misses the second, it is still a one possession game. She is a 73.8% three person. No timeout, so if she misses under Tennessee, you can soft pressure it a bit. Two possession game. Every second timeout has been called by Tennessee. Now this is a time, 24.2 seconds, where you're right on the edge. And can we shoot a two, or do we have to take a three? Yeah, no, I think because it's a, a situation where you need at least two possessions, Mike, I think you go right at the rim. Tennessee doesn't want to foul. You're going to get an easy deuce. You foul them immediately on the inbounds. Everybody's up looking for the steal. Foul on the catch. Hope you'll get ready for ESPN's full circle coverage of the biggest night in women's college basketball. We've got the complete game coverage on ESPN. ESPN 2 has close-ups of the coaches and players. You can go above the rim on ESPNU and get enhanced coverage on ESPN 360. The NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz, an ESPN full circle event, Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern. Lana leans into a three short. Out of bounds to Tennessee with 15-9. The Tennessee fans on their feet. North Carolina has stolen the ball so many times. Can they do it again? A foul with 14-5. Sidney Spencer will go to the line. And if anybody is going to shoot, this is the one you want. 89.1%. She is in the top 10 in seven different categories at Tennessee. Even if she makes both, it's still just a two possession game, giving hope to the heels, but now they must shoot the three. Tennessee again, regardless of make or miss, a little bit of soft pressure, exactly what they did on the last possession. Soft pressure, make them take time as they're coming up the floor. You see Bobbitt and Warren Buckley coming up. Miller, dogged by Bobbitt, goes all the way in, scoop shot, no. Saved by Tennessee, stolen back now on the floor. Latta trying to draw the foul. That's it. Miller got the last shot, trying and trying to draw the foul from Parker. And Tennessee with a remarkable comeback. Score.
scoring 20 of the last 22 points in the last 8 minutes and 18 seconds of this game. You have to take your hat off to the Lady Ball. Uh, they dug deep, and the two players, I think, along with Candace Parker, that stepped up in the big moments, Shannon Bobbitt and Nikki Anasicki, they never quit on a single play throughout the course of the game. Hornbuckle had some keyboards. This was a great team effort by Carolina, and Candace Parker made tons of free throws down the stretch. So we're set for a national championship game at 8.30 on Tuesday night. Rutgers, the number four seed, and the number four seed has never won the NCAA Women's Championship against number one seed, Tennessee. Let's go to Holly. Coach Summit, with seven minutes left, you told your team we are not going home without a national championship. How did they respond? Oh, they responded great. I, I just felt like in the first half we were over-anxious. We just, we just weren't in sync. Second half, our defense obviously elevated, and we executed. We got Candace the, the ball inside. We had different players make big plays. It was the hustle plays, though, that turned this game around for you. How did your team get every loose board, every rebound, every tip ball in the second half? Because I don't want to go home without a championship. All That's right. it, Holly. That's it. Candace, for you, what did you learn about yourself tonight in first half foul trouble? The second half, you had to step up. What did you learn about yourself tonight that it would take to make a championship? You know, I'll tell you what I learned about our team. I learned that we can play through adversity, and that's what we did in the first half, and we did that in the second. I was really proud of how we played. Candace, you are a Powerade player of the game. As you came off celebrating here, you were very serious, though. Put your finger up and said, one more. How will you be focused to keep your eye on the prize? Well, you know what? Tennessee's had a drought. We've had a drought, so we're trying to bring it back to Knoxville. All right, well, it's raining tonight, guys. Holly, thank you very much. And Tennessee with a magnificent comeback. They